Hey there, this is Brent Arnold, and today I want to show you how to debug using Flash Builder 4.5. Specifically, we're going to debug on iOS device on the iPad. This, of course, applies if you were using your iPhone or iPod Touch. You could also do the same debugging techniques. Now, with debugging, what we want to do is be able to see, trace events and uh, other things like uh, breakpoints within the code, things like that, where when the app is running on the device, we can actually interact with it using the Flash IDE, Flash Builder, that is. So the way we do that, we want to incorporate some trace statements. So uh, let's start with adding something here in our trace init function. We're going to say I is initted. Now, of course, this is not the English class, so uh, I'm going to I'm going to speak as I usually speak which is kind of nonsense, but we're all friends here. Okay, once we're in the handle touch events method, let's trace uh, whether when we get a touch begin. So we say touch begin called, and then we also know that the other event is going to be uh, touch end is called. All right, very simple. Obviously, you can do quite a bit more with your trace as well as breakpoints. So here we have a few trace statements, and we want to see that trace in the console when we launch the debugger. Now, uh, go ahead and save this file, and let's choose debug, and it's going to pop up, pop up, and let's specify a project. All I did was double-click mobile application, and it brought up the app that was currently open. Uh, so I go ahead and select on device and then I want to go ahead and choose debug. So let's do it. This is going to run and it's going to create the uh, IPA file and if you recall uh, you can use Xcode on Mac to uh, use the organizer to add apps to your device really quickly. Uh, for Windows You'll have to use um, there's an there's a program called iPhone configuration utility maybe maybe that's what it's called anyway I'll uh, post it on the website there's um, an iPhone configuration program for Mac and Windows that allows you to create some things and allows you to add apps using uh, just that program instead of iTunes so that's something to look at otherwise uh, if you're on a Mac we're going to use Xcode. I'll show another video sometime. I want to show how to do this Wi-Fi uh, over the air uh, installation. It's pretty simple. Anyway, so now it says waiting for debugger connection. So we've already got it and we want to do this fairly quickly. So go ahead and find it there and go ahead and open Xcode, all that good stuff. Here's the organizer. I'm dragging it here. It's going to sync to my iPad and there it is. Now, if I switch over to my device, You'll see that the app is there. And let's click back to, and the app is running, and it's loading. And what it's doing is it's trying to connect to the debugger. So as soon as this loads and successfully sees the uh, debugger on the Wi-Fi, it will connect. All right, here's hoping. You can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. Come on, come on, come on. Now, this is good because we may have to uh, make sure that we're connected to the same Wi-Fi. Oh, very interesting. All right, so I'm connected there. All right, I want to cancel this. And before it runs away, I'm just going to check my Wi-Fi. <laughs> I'm not on the same Wi-Fi. What a coinky dink. All right. See, this is what happens if you don't. This is what happens. Okay, now we're on the same Wi-Fi. All right. Let's try this one more time. Let's go ahead and run the app. Oh, oh, there it goes. Hey, ooh, I is knitted. Look, we have liftoff. The final voyage of Starship Brent. Okay. So I is an edit called. Now touch to touch begin called. 
Oh, touch and called. Oh, touch begin. Oh, and oh, begin and begin and check this out. Begin and ooh, look at that. That's so cool. Isn't that cool? All right, very simple debugging. So what's the lesson of the day? Lesson of the day, Brent, is make sure your device is on the same wireless network as your development machine. Go ahead and click. You can click stop and it will stop the app on the device and it will stop debugging. Okay, maybe it doesn't stop it on the device. I was just kidding. Just joshing you. Just Brenton you. Okay. If you're using USB debugging for Android, it'll stop the, the, the process. But anyway, here we are. And the next thing I want to talk about real quick is how to add a uh, start pay, uh, splash screen. You know, there's this starting image. And one thing I want you to pay attention to, I'm going to switch over to uh, a browser. And I want you to search for the iOS application programming guide. And this is on the developer site, and you don't even have to log in to see this. You can just search for it. And I want you to go over to build time configuration details. And the reason for that is I want to pay attention to some of the things that we can do with uh, the way we create our Air for iOS apps. Notice here it talks about the application bundle. The bundle is the uh, package that contains all of the assets for the app, and, and it's, it's basically the IPA file. or uh, more specifically, it contains the app. The IPA file contains the app, an info p list, uh, and some other files. Now, icons are one thing that we need to talk about, and launch images. Now, these are things that you can modify, the p list, for example. And this specifically, if I say, also known as the information property list, see, like if I click over here, and I want to see all of my uh, property list things and device capabilities this is a good one UI required device capabilities there's all sorts of options what this means is if you want to specify your app to only work on devices that support certain features hardware features then you can list those and where you put that within the uh, building of your app relates directly to and I'll switch over to it's this app XML file, and specifically, if I scroll down, 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 here, it says info additions, right? So this content goes exactly as you type it, goes into the info P list when the app is built. So what that means then is if I switch back over here, you can use the UI required device capabilities key and have specific parameters within that. And it takes an array. And you'll have to look up the specific uh, way that the, the keys are written. Um, they're unique to each one. Some some have an array of strings. Some have just a key with a, with a value. Um, you can look that up, but basically, if you wanted to say, I want my app to only run on, say, the iPad 2, which has a camera, then you would say, I want video camera. And you would then also notice, if I click back over here, the device family is set to 2, which is the iPad. So that would that's one way to do that. So this is valuable information. Take a look at that. I want to back up one second. OK. Click back over to build time configurations. The thing I wanted to show is uh, this. Sorry if I'm scrolling quickly. Oh, come on. Where'd it go? Oh, application launch images. That's what I want. These are the splash screens. Now it talks about uh, you have an image and it's called a default.png. And if you have an iPad, you specify you can do additional launch pages. You can do default dash portrait or default dash landscape or default landscape, right? So these are options. And the reason for that is if you have an app, the splash screen, you want to have certain content and you want it to show uh, in a certain orientation based on the app that you're building, you could specify that. Now, in reality, you can still do default.png, uh, but for 
convention's sake, you want to at least do something like landscape or portrait. So one way to do that is if you have Xcode or if you have iTunes, you can do this on iTunes, but I want to show you how this works in Xcode. Uh, if I run the app and I'm using the organizer, I want to take a screenshot while the app is running. And uh, it's a little more difficult to do this in iTunes, but in the organizer, you can click. So notice I have my spots and now I want to click this new screenshot. I've selected screenshots. I got my hand on the device. I want to click new screenshot. And there it is. Check that out. All right, so, so there I just took a screenshot of the actual app. Now, in Xcode, it's going to say, hey, you want to save this as a launch image? And you're going to say, yeah, why not? And then it's going to say, hey, where's your workspace? And you're going to say, uh, I don't have a workspace because I didn't do this in Xcode. That's all right. Click cancel. Uh, and then this is selected and go ahead and choose export. Uh, let's save this. We're going to call this default landscape.png, right? Save it to the desktop. Go ahead and click save. I want to click back to Flash Builder. Now you can't see this, but on my desktop, I'm going to click. I want to drag to the source folder and let go and check it out. That file is the PNG that we just created. Now, when I go to package this, it's going to throw a splash screen. I'm going to cancel the app that's on here. I'm going to delete the app from the device just for the sake of making sure everything's clear. And then I'm going to debug this one more time. So go ahead and click debug. It's going to build. And since we're on the right wireless network, it's going to work. Also, if you have trouble, sometimes uh, if you have a firewall or other things and certain ports are being blocked, uh, you may want to look into that just to see if it's open so that you can connect. I'm not exactly sure what port it uses, but there are ways to look into that for iOS debugging on Flash Builder. But if you're cool like me, it'll work. It'll, it, it just works. Like Steve Jobs says, it, it just works. Unless, of course, you're being sued because you're using Apple's in-app purchase. But what, who, who am I to say that? All right, it's happening. Okay, now, reveal and finder. All right, check it out. Now, uh, it's gonna be packaged, and let's go to Xcode, and click, and drag, applications. Boom, there it is. All right, it's installed. I'm over here at my device. I click, oh, check it out. Splash screen. Yeah. Did you see that? Did you see that? That was cool. And then, of course, you got your app and everything else. Hey, check it out. Now, one thing you may notice is that there's a little difference. Someone's going to look at this IPA and say, Brent, uh, the other day when we built this, it was 3.9 megabytes. Why is it 4.6? Well, the reason for that is that the IPA, the app, has been bundled with debug code that allows you to connect over the Wi-Fi. So keep that in mind. That's another reason why you don't want to deploy with a debug version. First of all, uh, it's going to cause, it's not going to be as performant, there's a word for you, performant, as a release build. So keep that in mind. And that's also why it's a little larger because there's debugging stuff. All right. So hope you uh, enjoyed that. Again, debugging over wireless, keep the Wi-Fi networks, make sure the device is connected. And there's how you create, you can do your default landscape images. Uh, you can create them, you know, you can uh, create them if you press the power and home button on the device. You can then take a snapshot um, and you can just copy those from iTunes, uh, rename them, drag them over. Again, you're going to pay attention to this documentation here, iOS application programming guide. and understand that a lot of this you can work with. All right, till next time, Brent out.